Hi, I'm Tim Robo, and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. What do you do when you got a huge project and you are so burned out on the job you're doing? For me, I say change it up and do something a little different. So I've been working on getting this passenger side with all the lower bins fitted out, all the handles, all the metal work done. So we're all the way here to the back to the spare tire. That's done, and today I'll be working on the tail lights. But what do you do when you just wake up on that Sunday morning and you're like, man, I just do not feel like cutting metal and grinding and doing all that. So I knew the interior had to be done and I wanted just something very functional and um, still kind of simple <laughs> with a little bit of flair to it. Anyway, this is um, these really soft uh, rugs from Walmart and uh, they, they feel so nice. And I figure like while your knee is up against this thing and you're you're going down the road chafing, it'd be nice to have a little bit of padding and some furry stuff. So kind of went a little uh, little fur on it. Now we can see the headliner and the back wall is not done. But uh, I came in here and I um, removed the military seats. Originally I b bought these seats for the Humvee project, but uh, I kind of wanted something a little bit more sporty for the Humvee. So I removed uh, these seats from uh, installing in the Humvee and said, well, they'd probably be a great fit in here. And they fully recline. They are leather, perforated leather. I'm not sure if this is leather or not, although it feels like it. But it has armrests on it, um, both sides. And it's very, uh, very nice to deal with. So on the hump, uh, on the bottom side, I've already done the, um, I think it's a Dynamat product. Uh, three-quarter foam with a reflective on it just to kind of help keep the sound down and then I've done on top of here this is a four inch foam uh, with the same uh, same padding here see if I can step up in here and just kind of get a good look of the interior but uh, yeah this is kind of what I want to go with uh, right now let me uh, get this pulled through so some of the things is I have spare parts that I'm going to be taking with me. Um, still going to take some of that stuff and uh, put those down in the lower bins. But I got the winch controller for the 25K Sherpa winch. Uh, I got the new um, longer, uh, what are these things called? Sun visors um, that I'm going to be replacing. But for right now, I'm kind of done um, on the inside, I have the uh, Midwest Military Equipment uh, door pulls and cup holder. I did the uh, da the uh, dash. This probably will help a little bit on sound. When I do hit the road, one of my projects will be is to put that dynamat on the uh, on the roof, uh, maybe on the back wall, and then uh, I do plan on putting some uh, polystyrene in there stuck to it, and then putting. Um, some type of wood that I can t attach either a fur or a carpet or something to. But I have uh, painted everything in here uh, that's going to show a uh, Rust-Oleum Professional flat black. Um, I did the dash. And I left room here for putting in the air conditioning unit that I have uh, in the box. I, I may or may not take that on the road. Um, when I come back here in June, um, maybe that'll be the project for that. Um, I don't plan on doing a whole lot of driving. I plan on maybe driving, uh, you know, maybe no more than 100 miles a day, um, but not every day. Um, kind of plan, especially with gas prices. I want to go somewhere and sit for a little while. So still working out what the plans are on that. But uh, the seating for me really did change up. You can see kind of how far my seat is back. And uh, that's a real comfortable place for me to sit. Um, once again, we got the armrest. That's nice. And I felt like this would be a better um, fit for this truck than the other seats that I uh, had picked out for it. I think my I got the best top, uh, the middle line seat there. And I have spent a lot of hours in those seats, and they're super comfortable. But it's nice to have the armrests. Um, of course, I put this uh, steering wheel, uh, Sean Filner, Filner of um, Fastidious uh, Retro Mods, I want to say, on... Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, he's been instrumental in really just leading the way on this whole LMTV platform. Uh, he's not trying to sell you anything. Uh, if you haven't watched his videos, uh, it's Sean Filner, and you can find that. Uh, he's probably one of the first ones to come up. I've watched all of his videos. Thank you, Sean, so much for being uh, supportive and really talking me into um, 
buying buying this truck. Uh, he hooked me up with Martin of uh, F FMTV Sales up there in Oregon, and um, I, I got a wonderful, wonderful truck. Um, this thing has sat for a year and a half while I've been building it out. I started every week, let it run for about a half hour, um, used a whole half a tank of gas doing that, and I, I have a high idle um, switch on this that I can turn it up and let it uh, pump up. So one of the things I did uh, lose was my CTIS controller um, actually went out um, or wasn't wasn't working to pump up the tires anymore. It still had lights on it. I tried disconnecting it and reconnecting it, uh, making sure all of the uh, fuses were uh, reset. Um, last week when we pulled it out for the video with uh, Kim, uh, I pulled it back in and the lights started blinking on the highway and it pumped up all the tires again. So wonderful news on that i'm super stoked to have that that was one of the things i wanted for this truck because i want to spend more time driving this truck on dirt trails off roads um and uh you know exploring not on the highway um you know so i did put highway gears in this but um i bought this um let me get the right it's the garmin overlander gps and that's just the protective screen that comes on it uh it's a garmin overlander there's the box lane back there um i have not brought 12 volts back or up into the cab yet i do have an isolator i really uh don't know how to hook it up yet i will go back and watch one of sean's videos because i think he shows that pretty well um i still have tail lights to wire in the electric winch to do but we're about three weeks out from um being on the road um i'm looking forward to it i'm sure i'm going to have little things that come up here and there but uh this weekend i'm going to uh, pull the truck out as soon as i'm done with the, the back part here in this side which i kind of am i'll pull this truck out and i'm going to pull it in nose it in so that'll be the furthest that i've gotten to drive and maneuver the truck since it's been built um and then at that point i'm going to pull the drive shafts call and make sure that uh inland empire drive line um is available to do those take those off and make sure they they are in balance i do have little weights on them so i don't know if they've been balanced um this was a military truck and then went straight to martin he said that uh he did not balance them but there is weights on them so i don't know and i really hate to do this job um not looking forward to it but get the drive shafts out get them down get them balanced get them put back on so that'll take a full you know two three days of of process there a day to pull it um, and maybe get down there and then a couple of days to do it, I'm sure. And then uh, go back and pick them up about, you know, 45 minute drive or so. But uh, then I want to go through and check all the fluids, make sure everything's right. Um, I have my new tires and wheels. I'll probably jack everything up, spin those around, um, put the new, new tires on. I think I want to drive it first with these tires and wheels on. So I have a baseline. I'm sure there's not going to be a difference. But if I end up with a vibration or something with the aluminum wheels, um, at least I know that with the steel wheels, everything was, was normal. And um, so I'll know it would be the wheels. So one little incremental thing at a time versus building the whole habitat and everything like that. Uh, speaking of the habitat, here is the pass through. It's lockable from the cab, which I wanted. Um, then it's lockable again into here. So that can hopefully um, deter someone from going straight through. Um, and obviously I have stuff in the way there, but... Uh, there's the pass through, um, you know, it's a small hole, 24 by 24. Um, you know, it's crawling through. You're going to do it once or twice a day at the most. Um, most of the time I may not do it. And the way I did these doors also is I made them so, uh, they lift off. I put the hinges so that this door will lift off if I need to open it all the way up, lift it off and take it and, and whatever I need to do to it. I don't foresee anything, but, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, these two little stuffed animals my dad had in the car. Uh, this one represents my mom. She really liked frogs and collected kind of stuffed animals and different things for frogs. And uh, this little dog, I have no idea where it came from or what the background is on it. But uh, they traveled with them in the motorhome, traveled in their car. So uh, they're going to travel with me in here. So I'll have something from mom and dad uh, in this truck. Um, I think that's going to be it for now. Um, I'm really at the point where I'm um, I'm in a schedule now. Seven days a week, I'll get up and do a two mile run, come back and figure out what the uh, the day looks like. I'm doing a lot of planning in my uh, organizer, um, so I can stay on task. Uh, you know, my my mind operates different ways. ADHD, 
kind of I'm all over the place. But the whole thing is, is like this was out of this is one of the things I was going to do last. And I'm glad I did this Sunday. Um, this actually makes me feel better. And I'm looking forward to getting everything out of this cab. Um, one of the things I've been nervous about is just getting carried away and tilting the cab. Why I got a bunch of crap in here. So I want to keep this uh, cab tiltable and um, so nothing falls out and breaks the windshield out on this thing. So um, that's going to be it. Um, one last note while I'm looking at it is talking about this uh, Overlander GPS. I believe I can uh, coordinate and pick to stay off the highways yet still get to a destination. So I, that's what I would like to do. Um, I think what I'm going to do when I leave San Bernardino is just drive uh, Route 66 out instead of taking the freeways. Um, I've taken the freeway so much I got it all memorized from here to Bullhead City, uh, Bullhead to Flagstaff um, for the Overland Expo West coming up on May 18th, and that's that's where I'm hit, uh, where I'm heading right now. Um, as soon as this is done, I'm going to start heading that way, but. Uh, I want to take dirt roads and rustic uh, roads and uh, getting back to that CTIS, that's what I wanted that for is to be able to air down going down the road and pump back up going down the road. Um, you know, 65 in this rig going down the highway, um, I think that's a lot to um, to be doing um, in this. Uh, you know, I'll probably be comfortable at 60, maybe 65, I don't know, um, but um, it is what it is. I just kind of want to... Um, explore different things uh, with gas at six dollars a gallon I figured this thing's gonna get six to maybe even nine miles a gallon uh, that's probably on a, a, a really uh, optimistic day <laughs> but um, that's a buck a mile that's a buck a mile to go down the road um, so for me thinking to go to Flagstaff it's 420 miles from here uh, so 420 bucks that's kind of not a bad way to think about it um, when I think it about that way it doesn't hurt as bad as it does go into the pump and um you know pumping up 300 uh 300 worth on the uh, on the pump which will probably take three trips inside to pay for or whatever uh just to get it to uh to fill the tank but uh, i plan on kind of filling up um i think i only have a 56 um i wasn't sure if i had uh, i want to say a 78 or not but um or a hundred, a lot of guys are putting hundreds, but I think I have room in my bin there. I think I'm gonna do a, a separate little fuel tank uh, with a pump. So I will actually physically pump out of that tank into the diesel heater or into uh, the main fuel tank. So uh, carry a little bit more fuel. So I know fuel's a lot cheaper in uh, Bullhead City, Arizona, where my other place is. And um, I wanna leave there full uh, <laughs> at all times. So anyway, that's going to be it for now. This uh, video is actually went a little longer than I thought it was going to go. But uh, as you can tell, once I get talking, I'm passionate about this project. Um, it's big. I'm, I'm a year and a half in. And um, I thank you guys for enjoying the journey. Um, I got that core 200 I'm calling uh, out right now that uh, post um, and, you know, say, hey, um, How's it going, Tim? I love what you're doing. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate all of you, and I look forward to building this channel. Um, and I know it will build once it uh, once this big rig is on the road versus just the build series. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, much appreciated. Um, I will be doing some giveaways here in the next uh, probably six months. Uh, you will have to like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. Uh, so if you're not subscribed right now, hit the uh, little uh, subscribe and notification bell uh, for when I upload. Right now I'm doing about every other week or so uh, on progress because um, I find I get caught up in this this program and, uh, you know, it burns half a day doing a video. So um, I want to share with you guys, but I still want to get um, the product this project done because it is a huge one. So anyway, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for watching. I'm Tim Robel, and I'll catch you here next time.